Shalom, Israel. First and foremost, I want to say all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the house of David. Salutations to you, brothers, throughout the four corners of the earth, teaching the truth and righteousness and sincerity. To you, Israelite foreigners, come back home to the truth. To those that passed away serving the Lord, the dead in Yahweh Shai shall arise first. What you're looking at right now is the book entitled Origins of the American Indians, European Concepts. 1492 to 1729 by Lee Eldridge Huddleston. This book is basically a what they call peer review, I guess you can call it. It's a it's a lot of different discussions that that took place, you know, between these dates mentioned in Europe about the origin of the Native Americans. You know, there's a lot of people that thought the Native Americans came from one place and. Some said they came from elsewhere. So this book is not 100% um, backing up the idea that the so-called Native Americans are Israelites. Although, I will say that the strongest arguments that are placed in this book, because this book is not, you know, it's just a compilation of different different uh, origins or, or proposed origins of the Native Americans. Because when the so-called white man found the Native Americans... They were like, you know, although it wasn't a big surprise to the people that actually found them in Europe, they're like, where the hell did they come from? You know, so this book goes into that. All right, I'm going to start off with the first excerpt that I'm going to go into. There's a lot of excerpts I highlighted. All of them aren't major, so that's why I'm not going to go over everything. Some of them are just like, you know, a little, little something, but it's not nothing major. So verse page four, it says... In none of these statements did Columbus indicate any surprise at the presence of the men in the lands he found. So it was no surprise to Columbus that he found human beings living on living in, in the America, what, what later came to be known as the Americas. All right, it says Columbus, I don't even know what those numbers there represent, but I, I guess it's different books that were written. Uh, Columbus also noted under the date, October 13, 1492, that there are eyes were large and beautiful and that they are not all black the but the color of the canarians which means the natives of the canary islands which were so-called black and nothing else could be expected since this is in one line from east to west with the island of hero and in the canaries so it says they are not all black this this is a very telling um precept right here because it says they are not all black which means that there were black so-called black people in the lands that columbus found men in and there were also natives that were not that didn't fit the description of black so it goes to show you that my heritage is unto me as a speckled bird even in 1492 this is very like you have to understand something they are not all black that's a very profound statement there. Another one says, now this is something, this is Vespucci. You know, we this was uh, Columbus, this is Vespucci here. It says, in his first published letter, July 18th, 1500, he reported that the Indians were beardless, brown, so they had color, naked, and cannibal, and that they had various languages. All right. So... You know, that just goes to show the, you know, the, the origin, the origins of the, the natives. Um, moving on, page eight. It says, hold up. Okay. In discussing Balboa's encounter with some Negroes on the Atlantic coast of Panama, he attributed to Balboa the postulate that an Ethiopian raiding party was shipwrecked in Panama thus accounting for the Negroes now there. Peter Martyr also reported the practice of circumcision in the Yucatan which the Indians attributed to a former visitor he did not however say that he thought this might indicate a Jewish origin for the Yucatanian Yucatan Indians Yucatecan Indians now this is very important because Balboa Balboa 
died in 1519. So this is before so-called slavery began for the so for Judah. So these Negroes, so-called Negroes, on the coast of Panama, Atlantic coast, so the east coast of Panama, so these Native Americans, you know, they're, they're not from so-called Africa, even though they threw around the idea that they, they could be descended from Ethiopian raiders shipwrecked in Panama. But these were so-called black people that were already here. All right, so-called black. All right, so it goes to show, you know, that, you know, the, the so-called white man's theory, you know, th this this is actually proven history that the natives, you, know, you had natives here that were so-called black and, and you had natives here that weren't. You know, so scriptures say, you know, my heritage unto me is a speckled bird. Reading on, this is page 16, it says, Oviedo offered two opinions about the place of origin of the Indians. On the one hand, he hinted that Carthage might be their ancestral home. On the other, he thought it most likely that the earliest inhabitants of the New World descended from the ancient Spaniards. Now, this is very important because Carthage... As some historians have indicated, Carthage um, was taken over by the by Zebulon and by Asher, I believe. Zebulon and Asher. So that's very important to know, and also the ancient Spaniards, because originally Spaniard Spain was known as Iberia, which means Hebrew Hebrew land. All right, that's why you go you go to. You know, if, if you if you from Jersey, you know there's famous many there's at least at least three famous Spaniard restaurants called Iberia something. You know, so these are fam famous Spanish uh, places because Iberia is the the former name of of um what you call it. What's the what's the word I'm looking for? Iberia was the former name of Spain. Okay, so either way, you're dealing with Israelites, because Carthage, like I said, that was taken over, or, or that was ran. The, the Carthaginians spoke Hebrew, and the ancient Spaniards are also they, they were also Hebrew Israelites before the white man took over. All right, and uh, I mean, either way, you're dealing with Israelites. Also, page eighteen. Oviedo, this is the he that this is talking about right here. This is talking about Oviedo. He concluded that the Carthaginians had discovered the Indies long before Columbus arrived. So they're saying that Carthage is the forefather of, of the Americas. Now this is a long excerpt right here I'm going to read. It says, Lopez de Gomorra published his Historia General. Oh, in 1552, Lopez de Gomorra published his Historia General de las Indias at Zaragoza. The book consisted of two parts, a general history and a chronicle of New Spain. New Spain is the America, probably likely the Caribbean. It says, which was essentially a bio biography of Cortez. Six editions of the book appeared before 1554, but it ran into considerable difficulty. The author despised the Indians and filled his volume with outrageous characteristics of them right so Lopez de Gamora hated the Native Americans and he slandered the shit out of them it says he stated that their principal god was the devil that they engaged in public sexual intercourse like animals and were the greatest sodomists that they were liars ingrates and the source of syphilis he further contended that many were cannibals and knew nothing of justice, that they were sh they, they went shamelessly nude, that they are like stupid, wild, insensate asses, prone to novelties, drunkenness, vice, and fickleness, that in short, they were the worst people God ever made. So this is what the white man said about the Native Americans. He said, Lopez de Gamara wrote his book in part to persuade the council of the indians the indies that they do not deserve liberty and consequently decided 
they should be enslaved. So this guy slandered the Native Americans in order to persuade Europe to enslave them. And then it says, Las Casas, this is another uh, scholar, bitterly resented these slanders on the Indian's character and strongly opposed the book, saying its author had never even visited America, but merely wrote what Cortez told him to write. Las Casas' influence was sufficient to convince Prince Philip to suppress the book in late 1553. Okay, so this is an example of the so-called white man hating our people. All right, hating our people and making up lies in order to get us enslaved. Page 29. Curzola did not like the Indians, whom he accused of observing neither divine law, natural law, nor the laws of men, nor even observing the law of the ferocious beasts. Therefore, it was just for Spain to wage war against the Indians, to return them to their rightful ruler, and to make Christians of them. So who, who did they consider the white, rightful ruler? Obviously the white man. And this is a lie that they did not observe divine, natural, or the laws of men. The, the, the Native Americans were at peace here with, with nature, even if they weren't all at peace with each other. All right, so I'm going to skip over to page 32. This seems hardly credible since, as will be shown in the following section of this essay, other Spaniards contemporary with Sahagun were attempting to prove a Hebrew origin for the Indians. So the Spaniards, who were the first people, you know, the first so-called white people to discover the Native Americans, they were proving, they, they had different arguments proving that the Native Americans are of Hebrew origin. All right, page 40. The friars of Mexico, working as they did with the Aztec legends of vast migrations, came more readily to the lost tribes theory than those working in other areas. It will be noted that the basis for the lost tribes theory lies primarily in the Apocrypha, not in the Bible. The Apocrypha, the Apocrypha were widely known to the educated classes of Europe. So everybody didn't know about the Apocrypha, but the educated, you know, the elites of Europe throughout, through the numerous commentaries on the Bible, it is uncertain how much of this knowledge filtered down to the commoners. All right, so you had to be on a certain level to even know about the existence of the Apocrypha. All right, that's pretty much what that means. All right, I'm going to skip up a little bit, you know, because I'm only trying to put the main points into this video. I'm not trying to make it long and drawn out. All right, it's not going to be a 10-part series. All right, so skipping up to, let's see here. Okay, here we go, here we go. Page 65. Garcia knew of Acosta's work and his objection that the Indians could not have come by design since the ancients had no compass or art of navigation with which to cross the ocean and acquire knowledge of America. Garcia replied that the art of navigation had been invented by Noah and was therefore as old as man. Now, I just want to point this out because basically they're trying to say Garcia knew of Acosta's work and his objection. So Acosta objection, uh, objected that the Indians could not have come by design since they had no... So basically, Acosta was trying to say they came here by accident. So now I'm going to read a scripture right here. This is 2 Ezra 13. And I'm going to just skip to the point. Uh, 13 verse 43. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them. So they didn't have to have a compass. It says, and held still the flood till they were passed over. So the Lord guided us here. We didn't need, we didn't need man's compasses, man. Fuck your compass. The Lord, the Lord guided us. All right. So let's see here. Uh, oh, here we go. Page 66. On a different level of proof, the picture writing of New Spain. So again, this is in the Caribbean. And well, the Caribbean and South American, Central America. It says, the picture writing of New Spain resembled Carthaginian pictographs. Carthaginian pictographs. 
So they drew similar to the way the Carthaginians drew. Garcia also suggested that the ruins of the Spaniards, the ruins the Spaniards discovered in Yucatan and Charcas seemed to be Carthaginian in style. Finally, he maintained that both peoples practiced child sacrifice. Okay, so this is proving that the Carthaginians were the ancestors of the natives of you know basically what what's now modern spanish speaking uh america latin america all right let's see okay here we go similarities between the the uh natives and the israelites all right page 71 the incas held a festival in march similar to the passover the incas held a festival in march similar to the passover that's very telling. The Yucatan, the U, the Yucatecan Indians practice circumcision. Mexicans and Incas, Issachar and Asher, had eternal altar fires. Some Nicaraguans would not allow women who had recently given birth into their temples. That's observing the unclean law. Other parts of the law observed at various places, including those which said that men should not sleep with women who had recently given birth again dealing with the law of cleanliness or uncleanness if a master slept with a slave both were whipped adulteresses were to be stoned men and women must not wear each other's clothes and a widow must marry her nearest male relative tell me the native americans weren't israelites Try to tell me that. You can't. So reading on. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Page 81. The author asserted that the statues, buildings, and characters of Guatemala testified that the Carthaginians settled in the region. So the Carth so Carthage, descendants of the Carthaginians, settled in Guatemala. Okay, Calancha, this is page 87. Calancha, with characteristic candor, referred to the Issachar story as silly because it would not only fit, it would fit not only the Indians, but also Christians under Muslim control, which were Israelites, and Negroes in Europe. But what Negroes in Europe? How would Negroes be in Europe? This goes to show that black people were in Europe before the white man brought them there. This is proof right here. This is a scholarly reference book here. Now check this out. For for those for those guys that uh that question or or say that oh Arya made up the 12 tribe sign. Although Medina thought the South Americans and Yucatecans were descendants of the Gentile Ayactan, father of Ophir. The Mexicans are originally of the ten tribes captured by Salmanasser and of the family of Issachar. So that's why we have the Mexicans on the tribe, the twelve tribe sign as Issachar. Aside from the fact that there, there's biblical prophecy and all of that. You know, for you guys that, that don't believe that the uh, that, that believe that we made up the 12 tribe sign. Let's see when this book was was put out, by the way. Let's see. Let's, let's, let's look at the title page. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of you jakes out there, you forgot how to read a fucking book. Let's look here. 1967. Okay. To my knowledge, One West didn't start until 1969. So there was no school at a, a One West 125th Street until about 1969 all right but i'm almost done with this uh with this breakdown i'm just gonna hit two quick pages real quick all right uh page 128 in late in late 1644 a portuguese jew antonio montesinos also known as ah aharon levi arrived in amsterdam with a truly sorry with a truly marvelous tale while in the 
province of Popayan in southern Nueva Granada in 1641, he had hired some mules and Indians to take him to the mountains of Quito province. Among the Indians was a cacique named Francisco. On the occasion of a storm, Francisco remarked to Montesinos that the Indians had once off offended a holy people and that storm like the Spaniards was part of their punishment they had offended a holy people alright it says by a very circuitous route this brought him back to the cryptic comments of Francisco about the holy people on his release he looked up Francisco and confessed to the Indian that he was a Hebrew. In time, Francisco led him to the holy people still hidden in the mountains. These hidden people were Jews brought to the area by the pro providence of the Most High. The Indians had made war on them initially, but they had failed and eventually the natives became followers of the Jews. Then the Spanish came, and so the Indians kept their Judaism secret. We had to hide our faith from the, the, the damn crackers. Okay, so I'm going to read one last page here. 136. He thought the Scythians, the ancient inhabitants of Tartary, produced the Indians. He offered in evidence of his claim several characteristics common to both. This is Ogilvy, by the way. Who's the he that's that this is talking about here? But with that, I'm gonna close up just by you know saying that this is just gonna be one of many darts thrown at the false uh, notion that the so-called Hispanics and Native Americans are not Israelites. All right. With that, I'm gonna say all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the house of David. Salutations to you, brothers, throughout the four corners of the earth. Teaching the truth and righteousness and sincerity to you Israelite foreigners. Come back home to the truth to those that passed away serving the Lord. The dead in Yahweh shall arise first. Shalom.